Good morning all. Time to open some post. Yes, it's Julian's electronics post bag. Number, I don't know, 130 something, I think. Let's get this one open. Fabulous. Oh, masses of bubble wrap. That'll end up in the sea, which of course is not a good thing. These are connectors. Let's have a closer look. So I've got two types here. Uh, they're both vertical. They stand vertical. So the pins come out this end and you've got these push down connectors to other end. So I think the idea was that I could sit it on a board, push that down and slot some wires in. That might be quite complicated because you've got to put the wire in with one hand and push that down with the other. Tricky. And then the other ones are these. It's the same thing, but uh, four way. Let's have a closer look. So question one, are they breadboard compatible? Obviously the four connections need to be sitting on four separate traces. Oh, they are. Yes, they are breadboard compatible and there's just enough space. In fact, if I put that the other way around, let's do it like that. Yeah, there's still only one row which is accessible. But yeah, that's a method of connecting wires down onto a breadboard. So I guess if it's breadboard compatible, oh, where's some Vero board? It's going to be Vero board compatible. Not a lot of space on this one. But will it fit in there? Yes, I believe it does fit in there. Unfortunately, a lot of these holes are now filled. But yeah, that looks like it's also... 0.1 inch strip board compatible. So they look pretty good. Not entirely sure about the wire entry points. They don't look like they're molded very well because some look smaller or larger than others, but I think that's just plastic flashing that um, didn't get, well, that's leaked through the two part mold. So yeah, that's a bit iffy. And now to see how well it grips a wire. This is quite thin wire. This might be wire wrap wire. I don't know, but I've got a reel of this, which I'll use for all sorts of things. Push that down, in it goes. Oh yeah, it does seem to grip. Let's push it down, in it goes. It grips it well enough to pull the whole block out of my breadboard. It doesn't make breadboard contact very well. You can see that there's only probably less than a millimeter of movement once it starts making contact. But I think that probably would make contact with the uh, breadboard. So this could be quite good for putting power into a breadboard design. And of course, these little receptacles are receptacles are ideal for sort of screwdriver use. You need quite a long bit of wire actually to get in here and get gripped. But yeah, once that's gripped, I know that's come out. It's going a bit deeper. Yeah, I've gone in really deep, but that's gone right down. Um, maybe I'll strip that back a bit more. So I'm going to use my Wicon wire stripper number five to try and strip a bit more insulation off there. Lovely. Put that into the uh, connector. Press the lever and Oh yeah, that makes a very tight grip. As you can see, I can easily hoik that out of the board. Pretty good. Start recording. Oh yeah, here we go. Look. These are 10 pieces KF141R. I assume that's the part number. I don't know. 150 volt. Mm, I'm not sure I fancy that. Two amps. Yeah, probably. 2.54 millimeter pitch, so tenth of an inch spacing. Now this is a two pole, I've also bought the four pole. Terminal block for PCB mounting. 10 pieces for $3.90, free shipping. Uh, mine did not come from 22 New Century, but these ones do. Righto then, next on the agenda is this. This came from the UK. Ooh. And it is a piece of paper. Yeah, you always get a VAT invoice when you buy something from the UK. Well, it's pipe clips. 20 pieces of this pipe clip. These look slightly different to ones I've bought in the past, but you can't get these solid 
pipe clips anymore. They're very hard to get. You tend to get the ones that have a sort of flip over and clip on cap. But I like these solid ones because this is not for any plumbing job. No, this is for my workshop. <laughs> this is taking longer than I really wanted it to. Oh, that's all gone a bit astray. I think these are the pipe clips for, is it 15 millimeter pipe or 16 millimeter? Can't remember. Let's just cut that bit of plastic flashing off. Oh, I've cut a bit too deep. Right, I'm going to show you where these go. So these are my black melamine shelves, which are probably chipboard covered in melamine, which does tend to come off. I'll show you. Here, for example, you can see the black melamine coming adrift. But anyway, these pipe clips are used to hold all sorts of things from mains cables. Look, there's a big plug on the end of that one. That sits neatly in there. Uh, the TS100 soldering iron. This thing actually doesn't have any sort of uh, ridge or rim. So it's just held in there by friction. It's a little bit iffy. Uh, the TS80 soldering iron does have a little ring on the top that sits in there. There's my old Antex. Must admit, Oh, that's actually a bigger pipe clear. I think that's a 22 mil. I don't fancy using a mains powered soldering iron anymore. I just don't think I want mains that close to my fingers. So I like my DC soldering irons. Um, I've got scope probes in here. I've had to put two in one clip because I ran out of clips. There's a, oh, one of those sort of mains connectors. Now there's a hole there. So I'm going to fit this one now and uh, see if they, it works as well as these older ones, which I'm sure came from B&Q or home base, but you can't seem to get them now. So let's just complete the screwing of this one into position, straighten it up and hang something in it. I'm not sure this is the right screw really, but anyway, so straighten that up. Yeah, let's hang something in there. So that new one actually works quite well with the TS100 soldering iron, I think. I don't want to pull it out that way. I think it's that little ridge on the back that's sitting on top of there. Oh, that's pulled the um, soldering bit out. Let's put that back in. But anyway, it holds stuff. And uh, something that was lying on the floor was this other mains lead, slightly longer than the first mains lead. Look how well it fits in there. Yes, it's great for sort of wiry type things. Here they are. These are the ones I actually bought. Size 15 millimeters, box of 20, 20 stuck to a piece of cardboard. You can also get the 22 millimeter, which are useful for, well, my Antex iron was in the 22 millimeter, the bigger one. Talon snap in open clip copper plastic pipe clips for bathroom and kitchen. Two pounds and 35 pence. Free shipping, and they came from Muros 2012. The next envelope I shall open will be this one. <laughs> this nice, not good, is it? And in here, I have a thank you card and these things. Okay. And these are, oh, edge connectors with a hair <laughs> stuck in there. Nice. Yeah, these are printed circuit board edge connectors designed to take a printed circuit board that has gold fingers. Oh, let's just tear that, it's thin. Actually, no, that's quite a good one. Ruined that. Yeah, so it takes um, a PCB with gold plated fingers on the edge of the board, probably chamfered off as well so that it stands a chance of going in there neatly. These don't have an orientation uh, key, so you have to make sure that, well, either that you wire this so that it can take either orientation or that you're careful which orientation you put it in. And I quite fancied designing a printed circuit board with gold plated finger edge connectors, a sort of routed shape so that bit stuck out. I suppose you could have the board come down over the sides here, but no, there's not much point in that. Uh, double-sided, chamfered off. Yeah, I fancied having a go at that. And then this would sit in another printed circuit board. So it's an edge connector that takes a daughter board in effect. 
Now, interestingly, the pitch between these uh, connectors and, of course, these pins is 3.96 millimeters, which I didn't really know was a thing. But um, yeah, there are quite a few connectors that uh, adhere to the 3.96 millimeter pitch. And in fact, if you go online and look up list of connector pitches, there are dozens of them uh, from the very tiny ones up to these quite uh, widely spaced connectors. But these were a reasonable price. They seem to be fairly ubiquitous on eBay. So I thought I'd go for this type. And uh, yeah, it's just under four millimeters the distance between each of these uh, gold-plated, presumably, springy things. Let's get in closer. So close up, you've got um, double gold-plated spring-loaded connectors. So that should give a little bit of extra. Now, I don't know whether it's the... Is it my magnifying glass or is it actually pinched in? It does appear to be slightly pinched in in the middle. It looks like there are little channels here that could take, and I think generally they used bits of printed circuit board, um, take a little keyway so that you could uh, put a keyway in there so that the uh, board that you're plugging in can only go one way around. But I don't think I'm going to bother with that. Ah, it does look like one of these ends is longer than the other one. Is that actually, oh, I don't know. Maybe that's me. Yeah, no, I think they're the same size. I thought it was uh, asymmetric, which would be interesting because that would um, act as a sort of hint as to which way round to put it in. This is an 805 uh, 12 pin. On the bottom, we have labels A to F on one side and 1 to 6 on the other, mounting holes to put screws or bolts through if you want them. Now, just briefly, what are these for? Well, on my vocoder filter boards, when I build the actual printed circuit version, I'm thinking of having two of these connectors, one either side, and into these we'll plug input or, or speech filters. It's a little bit complicated, I'll explain it a bit better uh, in a future video, but the idea is that you can take these filters out and mix them up so that the frequency of the speech filter doesn't match the frequency of the um, excitation filter, the music filter. Now that should give me options like pitch transpose and uh, also randomly shuffling the speech filters with the excitation filters. And I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that might give the effect of a sort of analog voice scrambling system. Interesting. I just wanted to try this with a bit of board. Now, of course, this doesn't have the fingers on, but I just wanted to make sure that 1.6 millimeter board would fit in here. So let's give that a try. Oh yes, that does fit in there rather nicely. Yeah, so I think when I make my daughter filter boards, I'll go for standard 1.6 millimeter FR4 fiberglass. These are five pieces of the 805 series, 3.96 millimeter pitch. Uh, two times six or 12 pin dual inline package. I think that's supposed to mean PCB card edge connector 805-12P. $699 for five pieces, free shipping. And these came from Yixu 2010. This is another UK one. So let's have a look at what's in here. Uh, RCA to RCA phono cables, but they're really short. Oh, there's a there's a little lump holding them together there. That's a shame because I wanted to peel them apart. Maybe I still can. That's interesting. Our UK seller has gone to some efforts to remove the label so that we don't know where they actually came from. I mean, they came from China, but I couldn't find short RCA to RCA cables. And of course, these video audio ones are quite nice because you get three. Um, this sort of length. Now the company that I bought these from, Cable Stop, they are in the UK, have lots of different lengths. So I can buy them to, to fit my internal interconnects in my vocoder project. But uh, yeah, let's get this open. Yeah, let's zoom in. And you can see that there's a little block there, but I don't think it's doing anything. It's not a ferrite. I'm pretty sure it's not a ferrite. It just holds them together. 
but I really wanted the ability, <laughs> wait for it to focus, for, um, to separate these out. So I'm going to have a go at cutting that and I'm going to do it right now. Oh, this is really soft. This isn't really uh, hard plastic at all. This is PVC, I think. So it should be very easy to remove that. Got to be careful that I don't cut so deep that I go into the wire. Yeah, let's try getting that off. Yes, that's coming apart. And I've separated the cables. But is that going to come off that yellow cable? I don't know. Let's peel the yellow cable away from the other two. And that should now completely come apart. Oh yeah, it does. These come out quite easily. They're only loosely moulded in there. Good, because I wanted um, completely separate cables. And I've got them, haven't I? So three entirely separate uh, pre-moulded RCA to RCA shielded. Uh, these will be not braided probably, but screened with a sort of slow twist uh, outer screen. I don't know why I've got this thing about pre-moulded cables. I just like them. I don't like making up my own cables with that inevitably sort of loose fit um, strain relief. Something rather nice about pre-moulded cables, even though the connection in there is probably a lot worse than the connection I might make if I made my own. Oh well, it's just one of my hang-ups. This is triple three times RCA Phono OFC oxygen free cable. Yeah, AV audio visual cable. Now these are all the sizes, 15 centimeters. That's the one I bought. Might be a bit short, might have to go for the 25. Half a meter, one meter, two meter, three meter, five meter, seven meter, 10 meter, 15 meter, 20 meter, 25 meter. That's pretty long. Uh, so the short ones are two pounds and 47 pence free shipping. And these came from a cable store. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB. I've got a lot more PCB ideas coming soon, including the gold plated uh, edge connector finger type things. Also a big thanks to my patrons. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon patron, then you can click here. Another couple of videos up here if you wanna watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, then you can click this link here. Cheerio.